Today's markets are agile and advanced technologies are making it possible for businesses to keep up with its constantly shifting needs. Moving beyond monolithic, non-conforming ERP systems, many businesses have placed their trust in Oracle ERP businesses to fuel their journey through innovation. According to research conducted by Panorama Consulting Group in 2020, 93% of businesses that implement ERP projects consider them a success. The shift allows organizations to monitor their inventories and customer feedback in real time. With this level of connectivity, companies can improve their supply chain management and save on foreseeable costs. And being a market leader, Oracle ERP offers the best-in-class security assurance to the organizations as they undergo the transformation. In this video, we'll be talking to three of Oracle's customers as they share their journeys of transformation. Joining me are Rahul Malhotra, CFO at Integrion. Yashpal Jain, CFO at Sandhar Technologies Limited, and Rohit Nayar, CFO at Care India. Let's start. Could you briefly tell us about your company and the work it does? Sure, Vatan. Uh, Integrion is a global leader in alternative legal and business services. Um, we provide legal services for law firms, corporations. This includes financial institutions, professional services organizations. Uh, we apply a team of highly skilled resources, uh, efficiency gaining processes and enabling technology to help clients across high volume data driven needs. Uh, we are spread across four geographies, so we provide a, a judicious mix of both offshore and onshore presence to our clients across the globe. So we are basically focusing on legal services and, uh, and we fall under the category of what we call alternative legal services provider. All right. Over the last 18 months, the shift that we have witnessed in the markets is unprecedented. The landscape of organizational solutions seems to be endless. So how do you think this growth has changed a CFO's approach towards growth, innovation, and agility? Sure, Vatan. So, Vatan, I believe the, the CFOs are, uh, are in a perfect position to embrace this change, and they need to. It's, it's imperative. It's a given. They can't avoid it. Uh, CFOs have to work, have been working continuously to identify future sources of possible business growth, setting the growth agenda for their organization. Becoming a business partner who contributes to the organization strategy requires change for CFOs and the finance function. It is not only that you know the CFO can change his mindset. The whole finance function, the organization needs to change if the CFO wants to be a business partner to the organization and have a have a say on the uh, on the table in terms of strategy for the organization, the future strategy of the organization. And the chief function and the chief change that, the, uh, that, that you know, a CFO needs to bring about is to cultivate agility in, in its function. You know, CFOs have to overcome the skepticism about applying agile methods. Uh, they have to move away from the traditional thinking of bookkeeping, reporting, and using traditional methods of accounting to embrace digital, embrace technology, come up with these new solutions that are coming in the market to automate their transaction processes like AR, AP, payroll processing, etc. Because that would then free up the time of their teams uh, to, to contribute to more value-added uh, functions or value-added activities which can provide better insights uh, to the organization or to the management. You know, finance has, has a strategic advantage or a key advantage as in that they have they are a custodian of the entire data, financial data of the organization. And we all know that data is, is the new oil today, right? So if we leverage, if we have bandwidth, uh, if we generate bandwidth in our finance function to use that data, to leverage that data through analytical tools that are available and come up with these insights for the management, that is what uh, uh, the CFOs of future are looking at. And in order to do that, business agility in terms of processes business agility in form of uh, decision making becomes very, very critical. You know, the, the question that the CFO should be asking uh, themselves is, do we have capacity to find new value opportunities uh, once we have met our recording and reporting responsibility? Uh, you know, what more would the business want beyond just providing them, uh, being the gatekeepers of the financial, being just providing the auditing and uh, closing of it books uh, as a traditional responsibility? What, what more can we provide to the business? And third, do we have the right people? Do we have the right skills, data, and technology to fulfill this new uh, 
uh, mission that CFOs are, are embarking on when it comes to becoming business partners. You know, this focus on agility can help finance embrace an incremental investment mindset across the function and develop the capability to evaluate these investment based investment based on small bets rather than doing a big mono big change you know they can break up the function into parts and start you, uh, you know uh, making these smaller bets on these smaller parts and start generating bandwidth for their team which can then be used to provide uh, more value added activities to the business so i think i think overall the, some of these things the cfos need to do in order to ensure that they are embracing uh, technology at a much faster pace, at a much more broader level. If they need to be real partners to the business or to uh, or to the management. All right. When you had adopted Oracle Cloud ERP, what kind of a future had you envisioned for your company, and how has Oracle's solution helped your business work towards those objectives? And what would you say are some of the key benefits that you have experienced? I would say, I mean, we had in fact. When we started on a journey with Oracle ERP, we had never envisioned work from home because this was done pre-pandemic. So it was a blessing in disguise, actually, because when we started this whole transition to Oracle ERP, when we started the implementation, uh, the pandemic had struck and everybody was working from home. So in fact, the way, the ease in which this transition happened, the ease in which we were able to transition everything on Oracle ERP sitting at home also helped us test Oracle ERP, how effectively it works in a work, work from home environment, because that's the new normal for, especially for uh, support functions like that. Yeah. So I think that came out effectively that, you know, even with the work from home environment, even with the fact that we are not in offices, everybody's accessing the servers from, from their own, you know, with their home bandwidth, uh, Oracle worked effectively for us. So, so the ease of use of Oracle came out. And as I said, it was a blessing in disguise that it, uh, it tested the work from home. Side. So that was one. When we started on Oracle ERP, our objective was primarily using Oracle ERP Fusion cloud version uh, to automate uh, some of our transaction process. There were very good features in Oracle like uh, uh, OCR, auto reconciliation, which helped us automate some of the manual tasks that the team was doing. We have been able to generate almost I'll say around 10%, 10 to 12% productivity uh, in our in our uh, uh, team uh, in terms of generating that much bandwidth in terms of people bandwidth uh, after implementing Oracle. And that was possible because of using all the features they had. So this was the primary objective that how do we generate that bandwidth from Oracle? And I think we have been, uh, it has been very, very effective for us in, in getting that uh, benefit out of uh, Oracle ERP. And the last, but not the least, I'll say, the scalability of Oracle. You know, uh, it provides us, it, we don't need any updates. Uh, technologically, earlier, every two years, three years, we had to go back to uh, the ERP provider to update the, update the system. Now, with this version, it is so scalable that you don't need updates. It's all auto. Uh, it's on the cloud. So it, it works seamlessly for us as we are growing, as we are growing our organization at the top line grows, we add more clients. The scalability feature of Oracle helps us maximize the usage without worrying that, oh, suddenly the data, uh, you know, the number of invoices going into Oracle or the number of uh, payments going into Oracle, will, will it support or not? That scalability uh, benefit that it offers has been tremendous for us. And I think, uh, I, I think all our objectives or intent behind Oracle has been uh, achieved with this with this transition two years back that we did. And finally, with disruptions and transformation becoming the norm, what is your future roadmap to stay ahead of the curve in terms of business transformation? These new and transformative technologies were rapidly entering the workplace even before the pandemic. We all know that technology was pervasive. It was, it was coming in uh, at a rapid pace. The pandemic only accelerated it by 4x, 5x, I'll say, right? So it is, now it's not anything to be discussed. As I said, uh, uh, initially in our discussion, it's a given, we have to embrace it, right? So that's what we are doing. We are constantly looking at new tools within our businesses, uh, uh, which will help us manage our work better, whether it is our internal function or uh, client-facing processes. Like recently, we have moved our entire customer onboarding to invoicing process uh, to, to, to a new tool, 
which will automate the entire process from when we are bidding for the client work, pricing the client, onboarding the client, and then uh, invoicing the client and collecting the payment. This entire cycle right from day one till the time the invoice is prepared for a client is getting automated. It will take us six months and we'll be, we'll be automating this entire process. It will provide us an online repository of our contracts, of our terms. So it's, it, that's, that's a new, you know, new transformation agenda that we have uh, implemented uh, in, in our organization. We are looking at uh, performance management technologies. How can we uh, use technologies and performance management for our employees? What are the tools available in the market? That is something we are looking at. It's still very uh, in, a, in a planning state. But, uh, but, but in order to you know, uh, stay ahead of the curve in terms of business transformation, as I said, technology has to be the key component of any strategy in future. Um, and you know the reason why, I, I'll give you one or two reasons primarily why that is becoming critical. All clients expect everything on demand, right? This whole, they want the same kind of experience that they have with technology in their personal life. Like everything is getting uh, instant in terms of when you look at business to consumer kind of a, a interface, everything is available today on your, on your mobile phone, right? Everything is on available in touch of a, a of app. They want the same kind of experience, experience when it comes to business to business also. How do I instantly provide them the process metric? How do I instantly provide them the results that they expect or they want to look at their dashboards? Our clients want to see how are we performing, right? Uh, whether we are adhering to their uh, level, uh, service level agreements that they had expected. So, so technology has to play a role in order to ensure that they get everything on demand. How does technology help employees to be more effective? Workforce engagement, you know, is a hot topic these days, especially with work from home. And everybody being dispersed in various cities across the country, how do you make them more effective? How do you bring uh, them together? Uh, so workplace technologies are becoming pr critical and that's where the, you know, the, the point that I made on performance management becomes critical. And third is obviously making better decisions faster. This, is, this technology, this digital transformation is critical for us to make these decisions better and faster. Our competitors are increasingly bringing in more products bringing in services, how do we stay ahead of the curve by constantly innovating on our products? You know, we need not wait for the full product to come out and then release it in the market. We need to ensure that even if we have a prototype ready, test out the prototype, fail faster, learn faster. That has to be the mantra if you have to stay ahead of the curve. And that's what we are, uh, we are in, um, you know, doing in our, in our organization. Well, the markets are changing and the brands must change with it. The connectivity and transparency that comes with integrating ERP can help organizations adapt quickly to market changes and more importantly, get ahead of the competition. Could you briefly tell us about your company and the work it does? Sure. So, yeah. Good evening to all the viewers. Well, my name is Yashpal and I'm Chief Financial Officer for Sandha Technologies Limited. We are a manufacturing entity into auto components manufacturing. And like we have manufacturing plants totaling to 42 numbers across the globe with four overseas plants in Europe and around, uh, you can say 38 plants in India spread into seven states. Huh? And we are one of the largest comp auto components manufacturing catering to two wheeler and four wheeler OE manufacturers. And like our company has been in inception since 1987. So we have a long growth of history. And like with the passage, like with the time frame, we have been growing, 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 using new techniques, tools in manufacturing as well as in support functions. And like if I say overseas, we are based in Barcelona, we are based in Spain, Poland, Mexico, and Romania, India across like South, North, as well as West India. So these are large manufacturing locations. I don't see any area that we have not catered to. Huh? And like as of March 2021, we have clocked, despite our lot recession, as everyone knows how the COVID has impacted, we registered a gross turnover 250 million USDs, equivalent to 1845 crores. So this is how we are impacting. So I mean, what I'm trying to say, we are a very, very geographically spread over company catering to, I mean, 42 plants. You can uh, imagine how they have been managed, uh, especially in the time of COVID when everything was under lockdown. So this is a beef background of Sandhara Technologies Limited. 
All right. Over the last 18 months, the shift that we have witnessed in the markets is unprecedented. The landscape of organizational solutions, it seems to be endless. So how do you think this growth has changed a CFO's approach towards growth, innovation and agility? So very well said, like last 18 months have been a very, very challenging one in terms of managing the operations. This is one aspect. Another aspect is the sustainability of the organization because it has largely touched all the industries across the globe, bearing a few exceptions. So if I say like CFO's role has completely changed over a period of last 18 months, uh, I mean, from a perspective of a routine CFO, or I would say an operational CFO to a more of a CFO into the growth for framework, into a sustainability and to look forward for the future and to prepare itself for the upcoming challenges like COVID. So COVID is not at the end of the travels that the industry is facing. So, but it has taught us a lesson that there can be a situation that everyone is in house. Nothing is visible on the roads or nothing is visible. It is a totally contactless scenario. So how a CFO will perform? You need to pay off your salaries. You need to pay off your statutory dues. Everything is lying on them. At the same time, you have to keep your growth meter ticking up, ticking up so that the investors have a confidence in your company. So I would definitely say the 18 months or 20 months period has been a very challenging one. And the CFO's approach has changed into a growth oriented CFO, into a business partnering CFO and more use of a technological development. So if I say from the technology point of view, the CFOs has grown up more in last 20 months because it's not just managing the finance, it's just managing the entire company to keep an entire company integrated, to keep all the functions, all the modules together so that you have a real time picture in front of you. Whether you are sitting at your home, you are doing work from home or you are sitting at the plant location, you are sitting at the corporate office, you should be aware and well updated how the company is moving, in what direction the company is moving. So I would say the agility of the business, I mean, it's changing day by day. It's putting the CFOs in the front runner as a front runners to the growth of the organization, to the transformation of the organization. I mean, as a CFO, I cannot more say like that I am more included in the finance. I can arrange a bank loan. No. Because that is a part of my job, but my part of job is how can I keep my operations integrated? When I say integrate, it should not be that I am able to visit. Uh, I mean, I mean, uh, I am able to visit, have a visibility of all the information. But my peers, my other functionary should also be able to sit on the same table and we decide on the future prospect. Secondly, I would say, at the time the COVID has given a challenge to us, it has thrown an opportunity also. Opportunity in terms of operational excellence and opportunity in terms of Growth oriented mindset. Growth oriented, when I say we have a full chances of MNAs, we have a full chances of DDs. So, what happens when we are technology driven, when we are using ERP tools, when we are using artificial intelligence, we have more chance, even sitting at work location, to go into depth, to dive into the depth, to work out, dig out the, what are the best deals which we can enter into. At the same time, how can we improve our operational efficiency? And I would certainly say in 18 months' time, Entire landscape of work has changed. No one has imagined that the stat audit will be completed online or we will not be facing personally the auditors, which used to be a task at late sitting at late night to finish up the statutory requirements. Everything is drastically changed. And that is all because of the, I mean, companies are using different ERP platforms. We are also using our ERP platform that has been made possible by the ERP platform and the technology. So I would say now the technology is the driver for the CFOs. If you are not going simultaneously hand by hand with the technology, you will be beaten in the race. You will be standing way behind. So this is how the, I believe what has changed in the last 18 months. All right. I think it's safe to say that no industry has been left untouched by the changes in the field of technology. And one of the most prominent of these changes is the agility that it has added to the business environment. So how has this shift impacted your industry? And are there any current trends that highlight this shift? So it's a very, I mean, a very important question because there are few sectors which have been badly impacted by COVID. Automobile is one of the sectors. Huh? Because unless you have the things moving, vehicles moving on the road, you have nothing to sell in the market. So when you are under complete lockdown or you are under partial lockdown, obviously your turnover, your business is going to suffer. So I would say, I mean, you know, our industry is one of the industries in addition to other industries which have been badly affected by COVID. But these changes, has, as I told, has taught us a new lesson. We have come up with all these challenges and like 
if i say the back support services or if i say the production techniques we have upgraded our production techniques now now we are i mean we are largely using the automation process in our production processes also so that even we can control while sitting at offset locations this is one of the things so if i say this has i mean totally impacted the industry you can see these days the auto industries are again moving on the far technology based components far technology based products because this pandemic has taught us like we cannot survive if we work in the same traditional environment if we work in the same traditional pattern we have to change over a period of time so if i say the agility it has added to the business environment the agility is a environment is that a quick decision making process has started a quick transformation has started within the industry working from a traditional setup we are now moving for a highly technological driven setup whether in terms of development of new products in terms of usage of new technology in terms of throwing something new into the market and we are the I, if i say the auto in the trends in the automotive automotive industry i mean automotive we classify into two categories the oes the one who manufacture assembles the business another one is the uh, component manufacturers like us who are providing the entire component set and the oes are just assembling it into a piece of a single item so if you say the auto component manufacturer yes we have witnessed a tremendous change a lot of changes has come up in the business cycle also our business heads also started thinking in a different manner how we go for a technology driven products how we can share a real time information with all our peers and you can imagine i am controlling my barcelona operation sitting in gurgaon sitting in delhi that's all because because this has changed us i have not traveled in last 18 months to my overseas operations to see how they are working but still i am getting complete update i am aware how much what they are doing whether we are going expand within the lockdown we have established a new plant in romania so this is how it has changed entire market dynamics has changed all right erm solutions have shown a lot of promise in managing inventories and supply chains what's the most prominent change that you have seen in this respect as sundar technologies adopted oracle's erm so like we are using uh, oracle fusion a cloud based platform with the advantage that we can access it anywhere anytime with our user id and login password supply chain and inventories have been a very very critical areas for us because if i say list of my inventories i am using at least more than 15000 components of my raw material component finishing a wide range of automobile products from die casting to visions mirrors sensors lot of i mean the a big list of finished goods also supported by a Uh, i would say a large list of the input products when i say oracle fusion yes i have met all my vendors within the same platform this has given an advantage that my what is my lead time what i have been what i have captured into my system it has helped me to keep my supply chain uninterrupted at the same time with a bare exception that if my vendor location is shut down that's a different thing but my supplies chains and my inventory stock what is my lead time that won't be affected because me and my vendor we are using the same platform or we have mapped him to our platform what is inventory levels how is going to supply me that is all tackled same is the logistics process whether i am able to deliver my goods to the warehouse whether i am able to go to the customer location so i would say erm is largely affected so, i mean helped us and secondly the most important aspect what i would say the benefit of erm is that as i told that is the real time information is available it is a integrated one i can have a cost matrix also along with me that what is my x unit spending against my y unit can i pull up both the resources that planning i can do so at the same time i have a chance i have a, i have a choice to go for the multiple suppliers multiple service provider based on the information that i have in into my erp so if i say my analyst team it's separately working over here they are devising the new tools and new policies that this is the best solution for us we should go for the inventory chain like this we should go for the supply chain like this so i would say as sandha technology it has yes largely affected by sitting at my delhi location by controlling the central procurement function from my corporate office i have ensured that my supply chains are not disturbed they go uninterrupted and my all units has the i mean the necessary components necessary supplies well on time as per the planned schedule this is what we have managed and this is all because of i mean that one of the technological factors that i can do anything sitting in my cabin sitting at my chair no need to go for physically to the unit sir like earlier times we used to go and sit at the units work out here what is your plan then we used to club all the excel sheets not required i have a single report i can work out any permutation and combination everything is possible 
All right. How important in your experience has the role of data driven decisions been in improving agility within the organization? Yeah, that's a very critical and important question. I would say data driven decisions are very important. I mean, they are the backbone of any decision these days. We have a data, we have a pool of data from internal resources. We have a data from pool of data from external resources. The more we go into a dynamics, we more into go to analysis. We drive new solutions. We drive new growth paths. And with the data mining becoming one of the necessities, I would really say at the tip of a mouse, at the tip of the mouse, we are having all the available information is a, which is not a, I mean, which is helping us in many fold. One is running our operation smoothly, working a very cost centric business organization, working on a very lean structure organization. So that if any unprecedented event like COVID happens, even we are able to survive in terms of financial business sustainability. And most important, we are having the entire dynamics globally. So again, I will, uh, I, I mean, I will highlight a question of supply chain management or the inventories management. That has again helped me because you see, I am working in an industry where the commodity prices are going upwards. Last six months, I am seeing a, a heavy surge in the prices with many of the companies collapsing, many of the vendors collapsing. So with these tools, the data-driven process has helped me to track out, to work out that which locations are important, what is the, I mean, the uh, dealings that we can enter into. Second, one of the, as I told, one of the important, so one is my regular operation that I have to manage in a very cost efficient and a profit maximization. This is one of my tools. Having less reliance on the borrowed money, more on my working capital requirement. Another most important is the merger and acquisition, the growth path of the company. If I say in today's era, the fastest route for the growth is the inorganic growth. Inorganic, when I say we go for a merger or acquisition of a stress entity or a non-stress entity, when I have a complete data available with me, it will be very, very easy for me to work out a valuations and attractive valuations. So in all forms, I would say electron, electronic data processing has helped us a lot. And it has given a, I mean, a backbone to our all our decision making. Largely, if I say my decisions are largely based on the data that we arrive, what is the business scenario going on? So that's what I do. All right. When you adopted Oracle Cloud ERP, what kind of a future had you envisioned for your company and how has Oracle's solution helped your business work towards those objectives? Uh, what would you say are some of the key benefits that you've experienced? Yeah. So definitely what happens is that earlier we were working on a homemade software. As you know, the homemade software, they are not integrated modules. Each unit work on their own platform. Then we console the data. So one of the things I would say our vision was that that we are working as a single company. So in all aspects, we should work as a single company. It should not be a, that we have a separate, separate platforms, unit-wise, plant location-wise, or business-wise, warehouse-wise. So one of the things was that one of the biggest question in mind was that we should have an integrated function in the company. Sandha Technologies means Sandha Technologies one. And it's not only Sandha Technologies. I have 11 joint venture companies. I have four subsidiary companies, another three step. All should be one Sandhar group. So one of the things was that we should have an integration within the organization. When I say integration means integration of all policies, integration of all manufacturing processes of the like products, all the processes we follow in the procurement, sales function, all other functions in the company. That was one of the prime aspects. So we follow a uniform policy within the organization. Second, accessibility to the real-time data. That is one of the critical aspects. So that was another focus that it should not be that I call of my accountant at the unit level, give, boss, I need this, this information you provide me in an Excel or a spreadsheet, then he will take out, he will need one day's time. That's not the case. It's only real time. A dashboard report could help my purpose. It could serve my purpose. Even I can drill down the report. There's no harm in doing this. So I would say integration, accessibility to, accessibility to the real time information, most important saving of time. That is the important thing. Earlier, my person were more into the data drilling, data extraction, preparation of the report. Now they are more into the analyst function, working out uh, with the business ads to improve the profitability, to improve the margins, coming up with the new idea. So saving of the time, this is one of the most important things that we had done. And that has indirectly or directly lead to the profit maximization of the company. So our purpose was that while we sit in the organization, we sit with our top management. Things should be that if they ask me something during the, my board meeting, I should be able to provide them handy within minutes, within second. It should not be say that, sir, I will get back to you. No, that is not a chance. So our purpose was that. And secondly, we use the cloud, cloud-based. Cloud-based, again, has its own advantages. 
with no problems of going for a backup storage or something like that full safety full security or confidentiality of data we access anywhere anytime even i am traveling to europe i am traveling to korea to my jv partners i can access anywhere anytime secondly my information is readily available and sabse so most important thing is that my response time is very cut short it's just within seconds or i would say minutes or hours compared to days or weeks so okay. all these factors we kept in the mind and second one of the important thing that pulling up the resources we have pulled up the resources why should i keep a unit wise staff now i will pull up the resources i can i mean the person can work from the remote location also to access the module wise system so i would say these are i mean there are lot of benefits if i start getting them counted it i mean the time will be too short right finally with disruptions and transformation becoming the norm what is your future road map to stay ahead of the curve in terms of business transformation right so basically business transformation has already started across the industries huh? uh in for some industry it started pre covid scenario while some industries are forced to go for business transformation after facing the heat of covid or unprecedented development due to covid so i would say the business transformation has become a reality it will continue it will continue with the more refined and modified form there is no chance no scope that it uh, a person can go back and say no i'll not go with the transformation so when i say business transformation the transformation will be there there will be ai tools there will be bw bi tools all these tools will be used across the industries across the various functions within the industries this is one of the thing and if i say a future road map for business transformation like in my company for my routine activity we are using bot robot we are using even in the oracle process so this is a road i mean the road map for business transformation uh, if i take a trajectory for another 2 or 2 to 3 years that how my business will be going what i'll be doing so there are some standard set of activities for which i don't require a manual intervention a robot can do the function a bot can do the function so this is a i mean this is a road map going ahead huh? so business transformation has already started across the industry in terms of back office support in terms of the front office support in terms of manufacturing in terms of the service sector thing is that we need to go along with the transformation we need to keep a pace of the business transformation it's something not that we can roll it back ki look the uh, pandemic has been over now i'll go back and shift to my old standard of working old style of working no boss that has already gone gone with the time gone with the era a new era has started and i would say it's a technology driven era if someone is missing the technology he is missing a very important aspect in his life or i would say aspect in his business environment one has to adopt the technology secondly techno adopt the technology and keep on transforming it keep on growing it making it transform within the organization it should not be that i have implemented a erp now i can sit relax for another 4 5 years no every time you need to constantly keep on developing it growing it refining it improving it with your organizational needs there is always a scope oracle is used in automobile also it is used in service sector also it is used in the infrastructure sector infrastructure segment also it can be i mean the customized one also to my need i can get it modified whatever i require i can i can go for a transformation so i would say the business transformation has become a reality and the future road map to stay ahead in terms of the curve i mean that was your question in terms of business transformation so that the trajectory of my curve will be upwards if i go with the technology if i go with that business transformation and if i say no i have to stop then automatically i will be having a bend curve coming down and maybe i may sustain i may survive or i may vanish from the market this is the this is my view and largely i would like to thank the how the i mean the oracle suite has helped us uh, in fact the oracle fusion the cloud based because I, even i am going for a more improvement starting april i am going for entire transformation of my system lot of processes we are changing internally and i am sure that will not help, uh, not only help us to grow but will also increase our response shorten our response time and increase our value addition for the customers and the society at large including our vendors all right on that note we'll conclude this interview thank you so much yashpal for joining us and Thanks. speaking with thank us thank you very much thank you could you briefly tell us about your company and the work it does yeah sure gautam thanks for having me here so care india is part of the care international confederation which is helping millions of people worldwide in living a life of dignity globally care has a presence in 100 plus countries care's relationship 
with India began more than seven decades ago. We are now registered as a Section 8 company under the Indian Companies Act with a diverse and independent board having a strong focus on the corporate governance. We build capacities of the communities to ensure empowerment of the marginalized women and girls community. Our sustainable and holistic interventions in the field of health, education, livelihood, disaster recovery and resilience provide innovative solutions to deep-rooted development problems to deliver outcomes at scale to our varied stakeholders. We work very closely with the government agencies. In fact, during the recent pandemic, we entered into MOUs with 14 different state and other government agencies to address critical gaps in the public health system by providing medical staffing, critical care and diagnostic equipments like CT scan, ventilators and dialysis machines to really help the ailing population. Currently, we are managing projects over 1200 crores funded by large institutions and corporates. We are in fact the preferred CSR partners for several large corporates and reached out to five crore people directly during the last year across the length and breadth of the country. We aim to impact over 100 million people by 2030 through initiating our community-centric transformation and promoting social change. Hence, prefer to call ourselves as a for-purpose organization instead of a not-for-profit. All right. Over the last 18 months, the shift that we have witnessed in the markets is unprecedented. The landscape of organizational solutions, it seems to be endless. So how do you think this growth has changed a CFO's approach towards growth, innovation and agility? Yeah, absolutely. Well, this super VUCA environment has made it imperative to move from a rule book approach to a playbook approach, combining situational awareness with flexibility. I believe it's no longer learning by direction, but by orchestration. The game of business used to be like a football where size mattered. However, today, I believe business is more like speed chess, where customer priorities are changing continually and the signals given by these chains are vital clues to the next cycle of growth. Hence, companies need AAA governance that is anticipatory, adaptive and agile to manage this new and heightened volumes of uncertainty. And CFOs are now the stewards of new technology and process adoption to unlock the efficiencies and enhance agility. However, for us, agility does not mean abandoning rigor. It, we need to ensure that all the necessary checks and balances are in place. They, they should continue to happen. The only difference being that maybe they are embedded now in the agile process. CFOs can really transform uh, these uncertainties through a focused approach around sprint, assess, stop, or pivot forward to enable the desired future outcomes for the business. All right. I think it's safe to say that no industry has been left untouched by the changes in the field of technology. And one of the most prominent of these changes is the agility that it has added to the business environment. So how has this shift impacted your industry? Are there any current trends that highlight this shift? Yeah, sure. I believe we can no longer use technology to solve yesterday's problems. We need to deploy predictive insights into intelligent operations powered by data, applied intelligence, and the digital technologies. At Care India, we are also reimagining the policies, reinventing the processes, and investing in automation and digital technologies to both streamline, if not eliminate manual tasks, as well as automate a lot of our you know, standard repetitive processes. We are also hugely investing in the skills and capabilities of our most valuable assets, our employees, to enable them to shift to higher value activities of plan, analyze, and advise. My role also as a CFO has evolved into a strategic enabler, serving as the integration hub for disparate business processes, as a catalyst for leading and driving change, and as a trusted business advisor 
to influence the future roadmap of the company. So I see this more as a chief facilitation officer leading the charge in the interdepartmental cooperation and performance partnership. You have led the ERM integration for Care India across multi-location operations, which must give you a hands-on experience on the challenges of a CFO in today's geographically distant workspace. So how do you think ERM has helped your company bridge the distance and run operations smoothly? Yeah, well, as a 70-year-old entity governed by some unique laws and regulations, ERM implementation for us was indeed pretty complex and onerous involving several customizations, etc. Hence, our transformation journey was also under close scrutiny by our varied stakeholders. Uh, thanks to the unstinted support from our board and the tireless efforts of the team, we could successfully implement the Oracle solution, which makes us all very proud of the efforts and the results achieved. So we, uh, you know, I would say across departments, everybody has seen significant gains. First and foremost being the real-time data availability. Uh, in the pre-ERM days, you know, the data had to be consolidated at our corporate office for cascading, which is now no longer required because across the length and breadth of our com company, uh, we have put in this solution where anybody can access the real-time reports, the real-time progress being made. And for us, fund-based accounting is an essential requirement since we work on uh, funding from our esteemed donors and other partners. These come with certain restrictions and also detailed reporting requirements, so much so that every donor has their own reporting requirement. And that really means that our accounting system must be designed to present this information from a variety of dimensions, such as geography, projects, time frame, funding source, we are expected to deliver customized slices of results and reports tailored to each donor's unique requirements. And that's where Oracle system has enabled us to maintain all these cost center wise records in our accounting system to be able to segregate the income and expenditure for each of these donors, which has greatly enhanced the donor confidence in our ability to deliver the projects and also use these funds optimally because we are after all uh, maintaining these funds in a fiduciary relationship. So when the donor really sees that uh, you know, we have put in this robust ERP system, their level of confidence and their compliance process also are pretty much satisfied with the way we operate. How important in your experience has the role of data-driven decisions been in improving agility within the organization? Well, I would say uh, the new age CFO need to transition from being descriptive in terms of what happened, diagnostic, why happened, to predictive, what will happen, and prescriptive, what am I going to do? So these modelings will really truly exhibit the true value creation going forward. In my humble opinion, CFO is probably the only person in the organization who could see all the connections and bigger pictures across the company. Everybody else uh, is too focused on their respective zones. The challenge for a CFO is how do you get everyone else to agree with this holistic view of the business? And that's where data-driven decision-making is transformational. When visual analytics is embraced by everyone in an organization, data becomes a critical enterprise asset. This helps create a culture that encourages critical thinking and curiosity. So hence, this data-driven decision-making really helps drive the company forward, leading to more informed decision-making which could generate a stronger bottom line, greater creativity, and commercial success. And in fact, I've seen it also leads to greater engagement and collaboration from employees. Having a single source of truth you know, governed by a robust ERM system in place with reports available to slice and dice the data, our dashboards are able to provide clear, actionable insights that drive the business forward. Because as a CFO, 
for Air India, I have the unique challenge of ensuring financial well-being while simultaneously making sure that the organization is advancing its mission, which really keeps me enthused every single day. When you adopted Oracle Cloud ERP, what kind of a future had you envisioned for your company and how has Oracle's solution helped your business work towards those objectives? What would you say are some of the key benefits that you've experienced? Yeah, so I think we rely greatly on the Oracle Cloud compute and storage sub services to support our scalability, transparency, program efficiency and satisfy the complex grant and compliance environment. Transparency is a non-negotiable best practice for us. So when you can quickly and accurately know and show what our donors want to see, you instill a sense of confidence that their discretionary investments are well managed and we get an edge over other agencies who are competing for the same pot of funds. Implementing these solutions have helped reduce our general and admin expenses by over 5% significantly enhanced our corporate governance framework, our credibility amongst the various stakeholders, be it the government regulators or our donors. And also it has helped garner a greater share of CSR funding because today corporates put a huge premium on corporate governance and the type of accounting systems which companies are following. So this has been a big boost to our endeavor to grow and be one of the largest not-for-profit organization in India. And finally, with disruptions and transformation becoming the norm, what is your future roadmap to stay ahead of the curve in terms of business transformation? Well, I strongly believe that value is created through insight and not data and reporting per se. Hence, CFOs need to consciously spend almost 70 to 75 percent of their time on developing and delivering insight, building relationships and influence and creating measurable impact within and outside the organization. As businesses would require more and more real-time decision-making, streaming data becomes paramount to making these real-time decisions. With the continued democratization of the machine learning, which can now be accessed through the cloud API, you know, the uh, the data analyst can quickly operationalize uh, the technology-driven initiatives that would have been prohibitively costly or time-consuming in the earlier world. Further, there are now a lot of scalable and flexible pricing and service options which would really facilitate business to analyze and react to this fast-changing world. Two critical skills I would stress would be innovation and active learning at all levels of an organization, more importantly, at the periphery. Well, digital transformation is hard and global research says that only 30% of the digital transformation succeed in reaching their goals. However, by grounding our plans and priorities in clear strategic insight, we can flip the odds of success from 30 to 80%. On that note, we'll conclude this interview. Rohit, thank you so much for joining us on this talk. Thank you, Gautam. It was a pleasure. The markets are changing and the brands must change with it. The connectivity and transparency that comes with integrating ERP can help organizations adapt quickly to market changes and get ahead of the competition.